Yesterday was all about C.J. Stroud and his pro day, and feels like there's a, a foregone conclusion that that's the number one quarterback in the draft. Lewis joining us now. What did you think going in, and what did you think going out of C.J. Stroud's pro day? That's a great question. Look, going in, I, <clears throat> Dan, I always liked C.J. because of his – his calmness in the pocket, his ability to win in the pocket, his size, his accuracy, his decision-making, how the people at Ohio State had told me that this was a guy who was a high-level processor. He was not someone who was just benefiting from being around great players and a good scheme. And, and you know, he didn't have to have, you know, really do a whole lot on his own within that scheme in order to make it work. So I, I believed all of that when I was told that. And then watching him play on tape and then seeing him yesterday, I'm going, look, and talking to the young man, He's got that presence, that charisma, that awareness that you want to see in someone who's being considered to be the number one overall pick. Okay, you you just do. He weighed in. He was yesterday. He was six three two thirteen. He's he's a slenderly built guy. You don't you don't you wouldn't even think he's two hundred thirteen pounds. You would think yeah he could easily probably put on ten fifteen pounds as his body matures and all. So he's going to get bigger and stronger. He's just really to me. He's a total package now. What's interesting about this debate that's going on now between him and Bryce is every single – I'm standing down here in Alabama's facility right now as this, you know, things get ramped up down here. Every single person will tell you, and you've seen him, if you made Bryce 6'2", if he was 6'2", 213, 6'3", 213, many people believe there wouldn't even be a discussion okay. about who the number one quarterback is. And that's really where the rub is. That's where the debate is. That's where the discussion really centers. Do you want the bigger guy? who, quite honestly, can do a lot of the things that the smaller guy can do, not everything that he can do, but a lot, but many of the things, and should be a great pro, or do you want the smaller guy who is just absolutely freaking electric, but you may worry about his availability over a 10, 15-year career? All right, so I'll make you the GM. You're Carolina. You're on the clock. Could you make a choice right now, even though you haven't seen Bryce Young do his pro date? You know, I'll tell you what, I, I – Another great question. I look forward to standing next to Bryce. I want to see him. I want to feel his presence. I want to feel what he feels like standing next to him. Having been a player, like I have a good sense of guys who, like to me, really, like if it worries me or if it doesn't. Like standing next to C.J. Stroud, I mean, this guy's a typical quarterback. He's got a typical NFL quarterback build. I want to feel what Bryce feels like standing next to him, if that makes sense, and just kind of sense what his – what his body structure looks like and how big he is. I just want to see that kind of thing. After that, look, I already believed that I would take C.J. Stroud after everything that I've learned and everything that I've watched and what I believe, you know, leads to longevity at that position from a, from a body structure standpoint. But it's hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to go against the young man. What questions are you allowed to ask on these pro days when you're around these players? You know... You really kind of keep it um, surface level okay. when you're when you're talking about from a media perspective, all right. So from a personnel perspective, a lot of the questions have already been asked of these guys. The scouts, the personnel directors, the GMs, you know, they've been into the schools. They have seen him at the combine. They have talked to all kinds of people who are close to them to where they are able to gather the kind of information that they really need. Now there's still more fact finding that they're going to, that they're going to, you know, go on as far as trying to make sure that they've crossed every T dotted every I, but by and large, a lot of the information's already been gathered. The longer this process goes, quite honestly, Dan is when people start to make mistakes because you start <laughs> overthinking the data. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and, and you know what else happens at this time of year? a lot of people start getting into the decision-making process that quite honestly weren't in it from the very beginning, and then they start throwing curveballs at it. And next thing you know, the people who have been in it from the beginning who thought they had a good idea feel like, oh, damn, I don't even know what I know anymore. Well, that's now why. I'm, I, now I'm second-guessing myself. But, Lewis, you know what I, mean? I don't know how I would feel if I'm the coach or GM of the Panthers and David Tepper yeah. is there. So the owner is there. I don't want right. my owner involved in this. My owner became a billionaire not making football decisions. In business, yeah. this is where you have to let the people you hired. But David Tepper is going to be involved in this decision. 
How would oh, yeah, you? He is. How would you handle that if you were the GM? How would you handle that? Of, uh, I, yeah, David. We yeah, he's he's a really good player. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think he. What's funny is I, I ate breakfast next to David Tepper this morning. You're staying in the same hotel, so uh, he. Um, I think you'd handle it like this. Look, I think guys who have made uh, fortunes for themselves, like he has, obviously have very, very brilliant, sharp minds. They have a great sense about about business, about setting goals, about people, and, and surrounding themselves with people who are smart and people who have leadership qualities and who are intrinsically motivated. And also, I would want to lean on that kind of expertise from an owner in that regard. When it came, when it comes to you know, a quarterback's movement in the pocket, whether or not, you know, operating out of the gun or the pistol or under center, I would be like, hey, why don't you leave that stuff to us? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll handle that. Yeah. You know, you, but, but as far as the personality evaluation, yeah, I, I think there's, there's without a doubt there's something that owners can definitely provide in that regard. And, and quite honestly, at the end, you know, at the end of the day, it's his team. So, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. As yeah, but it's as, your job. Your your job's at stake too. Off this pick, he doesn't you know, get fired. That's true, and and I think that's where like I'm I'm big on relationships and big on communication, and I think that's something that in, in the beginning, when you're maybe interviewing for one of these jobs and you're a prospective GM and you're going to take the job, you say, hey, look, when we have these kind of decisions inevitably come up, I hope you will give me your word that you'll lean on my expertise for the things that you're hiring me for and not have me sitting here second guessing myself and or changing my opinions because I'm trying to appease you because then things get all screwed up. Then I'm not really doing my job. So don't even hire me if you're going to do that to me. I think those are the kind of things that you need to be honest about. Talking to Lewis Riddick. He's at Bryce Young's pro day, the former player ESPN NFL analyst. What could Bryce Young do today that Mm -hmm. would secure being the number one overall pick in the draft? Yeah, I don't. I don't really think it makes a difference, Dan. I mean, he, he, people. Well, he, he's gonna. He's gonna tear it up out here. I mean, he's in shorts. He's gonna be throwing to guys who he's, he's already thrown to. He knows what throws he's gonna do. He knows what it's gonna feel like. He's been, he's a big game hunter anyway. He's been in these kind of situations before. I mean, throwing in front of scouts is. Like he's throwing in front of ninety, hundred thousand people. It's not gonna matter to him. So I don't think there's anything he can really do. What this is really, this is just another box checking. Uh, you know, scenario for scouts and GMs to kind of say, well, we've covered all of our bases. Because, I mean, the further you get away from playing the games, again, that's where you start making mistakes in terms of your evaluation. Go back to the tape. Go back to the character assessment. Go back to the football and personal character assessment. Go back to the medical. Use all that stuff then to arrive at at a decision that best fits your football team relative to what you can offer the young man. This, this pro day really is just confirmation. It's really just, again, checking off a box, making yourself feel better about probably a decision that you're probably well down the road to already making anyway. I don't know if this player was on Aaron Rodgers' list, but what did you think of the Jets picking up McColt Hardman and trading away Elijah Moore? I'm a big Elijah Moore fan. I am I'm, too. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I mean, I loved how electric he is. Saw him in training camp last year. Um, before we did their Monday night game in the preseason. What do we not know about Very this situation? Because if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I, I want him. I, McCole Hardman can run fast. I, yeah. Elijah Moore can make plays. Yeah, he sure can. I, I think there's there's a couple. There's probably a couple layers to it. I mean, that, it sounds like from the, you know, from the details of the trade that they were able to pick up a, a higher draft pick as well. I think they were able to acquire a two uh, by trading him away. And... McColl, you're right. McColl and him are not really the same player. They don't have the same skill set for sure. I agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah. I think this is all part of a bigger picture, but all part of a bigger plan. So to make sure that they have the right assets to try and acquire Aaron, because it's a, that, that, that's the more interesting thing to me, Dan is like, exactly. What does this, what does the trade parameters for Aaron Rodgers actually look like? Like what is, there's just some people who believe like the Jets shouldn't do anything because the Packers have to trade them. Because if they don't, it just cripples them salary cap wise. So why should the Jets be sweating trying to offer them all kinds of stuff to make them happy? While at the same time, people or some people who say, "Well, Green Bay doesn't have to do anything either because the Jets don't have a plan B without Aaron Rodgers." So it's it's an interesting stare down between these two 
to, you know, to figure out which one's going to really wind up winning this deal. Because both teams have an argument to say, hey, look, we don't have to do anything. Well, we don't have to do anything either. <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting. And at the same you know, while we sit there on the airways and talk about it day after day. Oh, I know. I know. I feel for you guys because I talk <laughs> about it, you know, only when I want to talk about it, not when I'm told yeah. to talk about it. I hear you. Yes. I hear you. Hey, yep. uh, talk about the Cowboys today. What are we talking about? Uh, I, I don't know. Are, uh, <laughs> make something up. Yeah. Keep fighting yeah. the good fight there. And do it in yeah. a real subtle way when you walk up to stand next to Bryce Young that he doesn't yeah. realize that you're measuring yourself. Up sizing him up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I will. I, I, won't, I won't give him the up and down. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'll try not to. Although I, I know I'll be doing it, though. Hey, have fun. Uh, great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Of course, man. Thanks. That's Lewis Riddick, the mothership. He's at Bryce Young's Pro Day. That starts in about 15 minutes.